here and worship the Lord in spirit and truth. Many are still joining. Um, so I thought I will just uh, introduce our uh, um, person who is here uh, I think in our church for the first time. Uh, so before that, I would request you as we enter into this time of worship, let's worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. I repeat, let's worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. If there is truth inside you, you will be able to come freely to the presence of God and worship Him, lifting up your hands, raising Him, lifting, opening your mouth and praising Him with your heart. Amen. So let's not stand there or worship the Lord with like, you know, sad face. Bible says, come as you are. That doesn't mean that you don't prepare yourself. That means that come, whatever it may come, whatever it is, just come as you are into the presence of God and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Amen. So as we prepare ourselves for the worship, can I ask all of you to close your eyes? I want you to introspect yourself. Ask the Lord, forgive me, Lord. Forgive me for things that I have done, knowingly or unknowingly. Forgive me for the transgressions, for the iniquities. Forgive me, Lord, that I have been not up to the standard of you. Forgive me for not giving you time. But as I come this point of time and worship you, Holy Spirit, we ask you to cleanse us all. Cleanse us all. Cleanse us with the precious blood of Jesus. Cleanse us, O oh Father, that today you may speak to each one, convict our hearts. And Lord, you will move in this place. Lord, that there will be healing, there will be deliverances, there will be breakthroughs, O oh Lord, revival happening. Starting from our hearts, O oh Lord, in our house and in our city, O oh Lord. And we pray, God, that you may move like never before. Holy Spirit, we welcome you into this place. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, into this place. We welcome you. Lord, we pray that you may move in this place. Let your presence be with us. And we pray for all those who are coming. Lord, we pray that you may bless each and every one of them. Protect them. Bring them safe. Help us to worship you for your glory. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Uh, today we have Pastor Sunny Prasad, uh, who is here uh, the very first time along with his wife. I'll be introducing them um, later uh, with regard to um, when he is coming to preaching. I will be in a little more briefly, I'll be introducing them. So before that, he is here with us. Um, so as he leads the worship uh, today among us, and he just told me one thing yesterday, Pastor, let the Lord lead. Let the Lord lead. So today, as the Lord is leading this place, and can we just put our hands together and welcome Pastor Sunny Prasad and the team. Praise the Lord. Shall we rise to our feet and magnify Jesus? Lift up your hands and let God's name be praised. Let his aroma fill this place. Would you open your mouth wherever you are? Begin to say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I worship you. Lord, thank you that you've been a God. You've been my healer. You've been my strength. You are my victory. Everybody, can I hear the sound of praise in the sanctuary? God has ascended amidst the sounding of the trumpets. God has ascended amid the sound of praise of his people. Go ahead and magnify. We have not come here to look to man. It's disappointing to look to man. But we have an everlasting God. Have you
you not heard? Have you not known? The everlasting God is our God. He increases the strength of those who are weak. He gives power to the weary. We have a God who is our refuge. Go ahead and praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Come on, come on. We worship you. We worship you. We glorify you. Jesus. Come on, raise your voice, people of the living God. We have a God who is with us. Emmanuel, God with us. Oh, welcome the Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with the power. Live inside of me. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill me with your power, Lord. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. You're the living water. You're the living water. in this place let's look we to the one in your presence. Lord we can't make it on our fill own with your power. fill us with your power Lord live inside of me sing it one more time welcome welcome Lord welcome Holy Spirit we are in your presence with your power, Lord. Come on, everybody, lift your hands. Let the power of God fill this place. You're the living water. Never the right fountain. Comforter. line fill us with your power if you're weak tired and weary i encourage you to lift that hand up to the lord let the power of god come in this place fill us with your power
walked into the house of God this morning there is a God who gives supernatural power most of the time we look to man we look to money we look to the arm of flesh but you've come to a place where his presence transcends everything fill me They that come to him will never go empty. They that look to him, their faces are radiant. They are never covered with shame. Look to him, church, look to him. The author and finisher of our faith, look to him. Run the race looking unto Jesus. Look to him, he will rewrite your history. Look to him, he will turn the water into wine. Look to him, you will never be crippled again. Oh, oh, I sought the Lord and the Lord heard my cry. Come Lord, come Lord this morning. Come Lord this morning. Open heavens in this place. Come Lord. Thank you for your goodness. Everything that we do, everything that we say, let your name be glorified amen. Jesus. Jesus name amen, amen. praise the Lord it's the Lord praise the Lord praise the Lord yeah. such a joy to see all of you and thank pastor first pastor Charles I don't know I thought I thought second coming took place and <laughs> and, and uh, I think we can we can just keep going like this and magnifying the Lord I'll tell you some of the things that that praise and worship does and why do we sing why do we scream um, I need to give you a disclaimer uh, I, I tend to be a little loud yeah and so I hope it's okay uh, if I'm a little too loud just you can close your ears you, for one Sunday you can do that 
Uh, 400 years the people of God never saw him there's only one prophet man who is quite elderly 80 years old he gets to see God on a mountain he has a burning bush encounter in fact in the bush he sees an angel that's what caught his attention it's not the quality of flame and lpg no it's just the angel of the lord and said oh my goodness and there's something strange about the bush and so he comes to the people and say i saw god and a god spoke to me face to face and had an encounter on mount horeb people literally believed him and he they, they saw some signs he's putting down the staff and became a snake and and hand you know turning a lot of things so they literally believed him telling god is going to take us to a promised land everything was going well and when they crossed over the red sea god said i want to show myself to people now you got to listen to this and then you'll understand why why all this god said i want to make myself known to the people call all of them to mount sinai just imagine six lack men and, and so all put together one two million people are around the mountain for the very first time in 400 years they're going to see their god and god comes up to the mountain the day he arrives there's huge smoke there is thunder there's lightning and there's one man moses walks into that smoke knowing that i'm going to see god Amen. wow one man could climb that 7000 feet high mount sinai and say this 80 probably 90 year old man pushing himself through to say i want to see god God had come down but he's asking man to come up. And at the sound at the sound of the voice of the trumpet God descended. I want to tell you something here. This is a strategy for us. It's called the ministry of the sound, a strategy of the sound. When God we have a transport system. Most of you came by a four wheeler. You may have five wheels also, no problem. Some of you came in six wheeler, I don't know. But we have a transport system to come to this place to meet with God. You know what's the transport system for God? The transport system for God the spirit is sound. The vibration and the sound of our voices and praise is a transport system for God to come down and manifest. This is a mystery. When Jesus is going to come back again, there's going to be the loud sound of a trumpet. the sound of an archangel the sound transports a spirit it's any spirit spirits depend on sound to manifest you take any temple you want you take any religious system study them they will make a sound at the sound the 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 the, the gods would descend the spirits would descend no wonder psalm is said i dwell the lord dwell lord inhabits in the praises whenever there's a sound he descends the whole textbook of praise and worship for the israelites the book of psalm they don't just keep it they don't just decorate it they don't just publish it. check one yeah my voice came back yeah okay all okay yeah good they supposed to sing it and say it the more you praise him when there's a sound of praise he descends when there's praise he moves When there's praise and worship from your spirit just gushing out you know the flow of God amen amen, amen. that's that's the mystery never come to a setting like this it's silence yeah is my mic okay yeah check one two yeah it's okay it's okay yeah probably i, I don't know whether i'm too loud for the mic again yeah um So turn to your neighbor and say let's make some sound. Let's make some, let's make some sound. Let's make some sound. Make some sound. Amen. Make some sound. Make some sound. So the more you praise him, I probably I'll highlight this in the message if possible. The more you praise him, he he transports. No wonder in one verse Psalm 46 47 verse 6, sing praises to God, sing praise. Sing praises to our king, sing praises. Four times you have the word sing. Sing there is a command. Yeah don't you neighbor and say sing sing say forget about the rhyme rhythm melody sing when the sound goes forth you have his presence there Jehoshaphat was very smart 
He said, all the battalions and the garrison, you stay there. I'll get all the singers to make a loud sound. At the sound of our praise, the Lord will come like an ambush, sudden attack. That's the power of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Give thanks to the Lord for His good. His love endures forever. Say love and joy forever. Lift up his praise. Say his love and joy forever. God's love. His love and joy forever. God's love. God's love. God's love. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. One more time, say. 
heaven we worship you Jesus worship you Lord worship you Lord Amen. Amen Hallelujah his love remains stays abides forever every praise to our God every worship to our God hallelujah in fact he deserves all of all of me and all of you the Bible says Revelation chapter 5 13 and 14 it's because of his blood and the finished work of the cross we became worshipers we are not worshipers because we have a Christian name we are not worshipers because we've got some some money some post some kind of aura around us now while we were nobody he died for us he's our God every praise to our God I pray that as you praise him let chains fall off as you praise him let his presence touch you as you praise him let the brilliance of his radiance just enter you as you praise him let there be a revelation as you praise him let tears be wiped out as you praise him let there be a passion as you praise him let the spirit of god minister to you as you praise him let there be a quickening in your spirit hallelujah amen 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 hallelujah every praise to a god Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our glory, hallelujah.
every praise, every praise. Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled with His power. Be filled with His strength. Be filled with His wisdom. Hallelujah. Praise your name, O God. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We don't operate with what we see. As believers, we walk by faith and not by the lenses of this world. Amen. Sometimes our eyes don't behold him. But Job said, I can see his footprints right beneath the ocean. Amen. We have a God who makes a way what no other man can make. Lift up those hands to God and let his presence minister to you. Worship him and serve him and adore him. He wants to do something more than our agenda. God will baffle you if he can take hold of you and tell you what he wants to do with you. He wants a willing vessel. Just imagine that woman who came and broke the alabaster jar. She never uttered a word. She never wrote a song. She was not featured in the social media. She never came to compose and release a song. All that she had was fragrance for the master. What she did, Jesus said, what you did, dear woman, will be written for generations to come that you prepared me for the burial. You don't know what God can do with your life if you can pour it out to Him. Some of us, we have our agendas. When it comes to worship, let our must melt at the heat of His presence. Oh, a touch from you, Lord. Touch from you, Lord. Your sickness is not a problem for God. Your color is not a problem for God. Your is not a problem for God your position is not a problem for God all if you can just touch that line and say all of me is yours all of me is yours oh God take it 
Let God do something new in your life. Begin to lift those hands and say, Lord, here I am. Sure I am. Sure I am. Sure I am. Take me. Sure I am. Break me. Sure I am. Lead me. Sure I am. Melt my defenses. Sure I am. Break my idols. Sure I am. Break my agendas. Imprint your spirit. Make your ways known, O oh God, to me. Somebody raise that voice. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You are here. Moving in our midst, I worship you. Sing, we worship you. We worship you. You are here, working in this place. He's doing it right now. We worship you. I believe. I believe. We worship. I believe. I believe. I believe. You are here, moving in our midst. We worship you. We worship you. You are here, working in this place. We worship you. We worship you. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who that is who, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. Oh my God, that is who you are. You are here. Somebody lift your voice and say you are here. That is who you are Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You, you, you never stop alone Even when I don't see it, you're working Yeah. 
falling. The walls are falling. The chains are breaking. The chains are breaking. The walls are falling. Shabababaria. Sakomimida. Lamida Kobebele. Shakadalaba. Your deliverance is nigh. Oh, 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 oh. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Oh, praise you, Lord. I worship you, Jesus. I worship you, Lord. I worship you, my King. I worship you, my Savior. Oh, Holy, 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 holy. Thank you, Jesus. What a God we have. Hallelujah. What a good God we have. Yes, you are. What a Savior. Oh, what a move of the Spirit in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Embrace Him. Love Him. Surrender. Surrender. Let Him take over your life. Why struggle? Why struggle in the flesh? Why pull things with your strength? Why so confused? Why so downcast to my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your trust in God. I will yet praise Him, my Savior and my God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. All my life, you have been faithful All my life You have been so, so good Every breath that I am able Jesus I will say Jesus The goodness Jesus Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord 
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What can I render unto the Lord for all that He has done? For all that He has done. I was a nobody, but He lifted me. We lift up our cup of salvation, Lord, and we glorify your name. Have your way today. Take over. Take over. All that is done in this place, we want to see you glorified. May we decrease. May you increase. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. As we come into the next part of the worship, that is the communion. And 1 Corinthians chapter 11 is normally the passage that we take for the communion. And I was just reading through this passage and I was asking the Lord, give me some insights on this passage, particular passage. And then if you see, it begins with imitate me as I imitate Christ. The so Paul has come to a place where he's saying our imitation is not from this world. Our imitation is Christ himself. And then in verse 23 he says I received from the Lord and I deliver it to you. And when you come to Matthew chapter 26, verse 27 and 28, Matthew 26, verse 27, is, this is Jesus before the crucifixion. He said, then he took the cup, gave thanks. The word gave thanks here is the word which many tradition use as Eucharist. I know you have heard of this word Eucharist. This very word Eucharist means thanksgiving. Okay? So some of the tradition, we call it as communion. Some other call it as um, uh, the Lord's Supper. Uh, but some tradition call it as Eucharist. Simply means give thanks. So as he gave thanks, then drink from it all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. So I was just going through, I was like asking, and then I came to this point that this communion is, Bible says, this is for you, for me. This is for each one of us for the remission of, for the remission. just want, so there are three elements to it. One is thanksgiving, as I rightly said, Eucharist from the Greek word. Eucharist is a Greek word. It simply means thanksgiving. And then the second thing is remembrance, as Paul clearly writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, that do this in, by the way, in Matthew chapter 26, verse 27 says, do this in remembrance of. So this is the remembrance of what the Lord has done for us. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 and 14 says very clearly, he says, he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of his son of love. This is what the Lord has. Remember this. When you partake from this communion, remember this. That there is God who came down, he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of his son. And the third element of Lord's Supper is proclamation. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 
verse 26 says, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he so as you are partaking from this element there are three things one is as I, as I told you is thanksgiving which is called the Eucharist second is called remembrance remembering that this is for you and third is the proclamation that he is going to come back for you amen now if you see in the same chapter verse 27 says therefore whoever eats this bread in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of Jesus you know sometimes uh, when we read this verse we think that this this is all about how we are going to present ourselves before the Lord so what happens is when I was growing up I used to be like you know so pious you know so reverent you stand and you're like you know I came from a tradition where you have to kneel down and only then you will be given the communion. You have to kneel down and you have to be like, you know, maybe if possible cry and, you know, just present yourself as pious you can be at that point of time. That is what I was thinking about unworthy manner. But then it's not about that. And I thought it is about deep introspection. It is about heaviness, self-examination, crying. And that is what is a worthy manner. But then when you read the word, you will know worthy manner or unworthy manner is something else. Just remember these three things. One, fiction. Second, faction. Third, flaunting. These are the three things which is an unworthy manner. What is a fiction? A fiction is that there is so much of importance that, you know, some people think that, you know, if you eat this bread, it becomes transubstantiation or last time I told this, or consubstantiation or, you know, uh, this is this remains as it is or this is there is so much of fiction around this there is no fiction and if you if you see in same ch first Corinthians chapter 10 verse 14 to 22 they were also combining this Lord's table with the participation of the demonic table they were also doing that okay that's a fiction that is an unworthy manner that means you cannot have the communion here and you cannot just go outside and go and say, you know, Jesus is one of many ways. That's a fiction. Second is faction. 1 Corinthians 11.29 says, they forgot whose table it was. That's the reason we call it as what? Lord's table. This is not Paul's table. This is not Peter's table. This is not John's table. This is whose table? The Lord's table. And if you read 11.29, it says, He who eats and drinks and unworthy eats and drinks, judging for not discerning the Lord's body. This is Lord's body that we are taking. So this is the faction. There were so many factions. If you um, read from the same chapter, uh, I will just uh, take the, uh, in the, in the previous, verse 18 says, Many are coming together, and I hear that there are divisions. And verse 19 says, I also hear there are, there are factions. You see, there have been differences or factions. In NKGB, in my version, it says factions. Right? So there are so many factions happening at this point of time and Paul is giving. And there are some other who are like, I am more anointed, he is less anointed. This guy is better, that guy is better. So there is a lot of faction happening. So he is saying no. And the third thing is flaunting. The rich were having their own meal and they were hungry. So if you read verse 11, 21, you will see the flaunting happening here. It says, in eating, each one takes his supper ahead of others. So one is hungry and the other one is drunk. This is not the Lord's table. So three things, whenever you remember this, remember, unworthy manner has nothing to do with how you present yourself and you rever yourself and show others how piety or how pious you are. It is these three things. One is fiction, that we don't mingle with this, this with the, the table of the demons. And second is faction, that we don't take this, having differences inside us and thinking 
I am better than the other person. And third is flaunting, thinking, you know, the Lord, as we heard today, not because of our bank balances or our, our, our tradition or our, you know, long acquaintance that we are saved, we are saved by the precious blood of Jesus. And remember that this is the Lord's table. May I request the ushers to come forward. And in the same chapter, we see that Paul is saying that, you know, wait for everyone to have this. Verse 21 says, For in eating, each one takes his supper ahead of others. One is hungry, another is drunk. What? Do you not have houses to eat and drink? Or do you despise the church of God and shame those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you? But each one of you wait for the others and have it together. As we partake from this, and I ask all of you to close your eyes and just introspect yourself. Lord, have I, have I been involved in this? any of these three things called fiction? Yes, one part of me says that yes, Jesus is God. The other part of me says, maybe, forgive me, O Lord. But I've been involved in factions, going around and gossiping and dividing and spirit of division. Or am I involved in flaunting? Not considering the weaker brother who is in my church. Don't even know who the weaker brother is because they are poor and I am rich. But this three had been asked the Lord to forgive you. And as the ushers pass this table, we'll wait till everybody gets it and then together with prayer we'll have it. Oh, how could it be that my God This bread, take this wine, now the simple may divine for any to receive. By your mercy we come to your table, by your grace you are making us faithful. Lord, we Rising you 
Lord Jesus, come in glory. Lord Jesus, come in glory. By your mercy, we come to your table. By your grace, you are making us faithful. Lord, we remember you, and remembrance leads us to worship, and as we worship you, our worship leads to communion, we respond to your invitation we remember you father we just want to thank you for this day lord as we partake from this table the table of the lord we remember you we give thanks and we proclaim God and we anticipate and we say Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. As we partake from this Lord, we pray God that none of us may take this in an unworthy manner. This will turn to be blessing for each one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. And we just partake from this together. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, church. Before we go into the collection for the tithes and offerings, let us look into the book of the Lord and what God has to say about this. The Bible says a lot about being generous and what generosity is. Giving generously, giving unto the Lord with a willing heart. As we see in the book of uh, Exodus chapter 35, the entire chapter talks about the Israelites and how they gave unto the Lord generously. They all came together giving to the Lord as the Lord had asked them to through Moses and in obedience. They not only gave to the Lord from their personal possessions, but they also gave to the Lord from their resources, from their talents, their skills, and various other things. Just as before, uh, this they gave, this what they were giving was to build the tabernacle of the Lord as they were instructed through Moses. Let us remember that in the previous chapters of Exodus, God had supernaturally provided the food for the people yeah, as he rained the manna from heaven in the desert. He also provided water from the rock at Horeb. He could have supernaturally provided for all the resources he needed to build a tabernacle. However, he chooses to receive this from his people. 
is just as a to test his people as their hearts in giving towards him willing and giving in to him generously in second corinthians 97 says second corinthians 97 said each man should give what he has decided in his heart not to be reluctant or under compulsion for god loves a cheerful giver we know how god himself gave his one and only son for us as a sacrifice so that shows as christians and as believers how we should give unto the lord sacrificially This dear church sets a model for us that amongst us how we should give unto the Lord. Yeah. So today, as the back comes around, let us consider our giving. Let us give unto the Lord willingly, cheerfully, and sacrificially. God bless you in your giving. Blessing and honor, glory and power, be unto the ancient of days. From every nation, all of creation, bow before the ancient of days. Every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory. Every knee shall bow at your throne. Blessing and honor, glory and power, be unto the ancient of days. From every nation, all of creation, bow before the ancient of days. Every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory. Every knee shall bow at your throne in worship. You will be. Exalted, O God, and Your kingdom shall not pass away, O ancient of days. O ancient of days. O ancient of Can I call upon Sister Sujana to pray for the offering, please? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I praise and thank you for this day. Lord, thank you for keeping us all safe, Lord, through all these days. Lord, thank you for this time, Lord. Lord, as we have gathered together in your presence, the Lord. Lord, I pray that you are here. Lord listening to our prayers father Lord everything in this earth and uh, everything in it is yours lord lord whatever we have in our lives it is all you have given us lord lord as we have given you from what you have given us lord bless this offering father lord bless our th- tithes and offerings lord lord thank you for the gift of salvation father lord uh bless everyone who couldn't put in this bag lord lord bless them so that they may give it to you father lord bless everyone who is in need lord as we offer ourselves and this offering to you lord lord use it for your glory and for the ex- extension of your kingdom father i pray this in the precious name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen
Lord Church. We welcome you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. First of all, anyone here with us who are fellowshipping with us for the first time, can we please ask you to stand? Anyone coming after a long time, visiting us, family, friends? All right, then welcome everyone in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, may we have the birthdays and anniversaries then? So we have the birthdays of Michael Ruth on the 22nd of March, Michael Ruth Anand, Gladson Amanna on the 24th of March, and of course Sherry Ann Catalia on the 25th of March. No anniversaries for this week. Uh, can I call Sister Susan to pray for the birthdays? pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for Mikael, for Gladson, for Sherian. We lift this beloved brothers and sisters to the throne of your grace, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for adding one more year in their lives, O oh, Father, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for helping them, Lord, to know the truth, Lord God, and blessing them with the gift of salvation, Father, Lord. And Lord, thank you, Lord, for filling them with the power of an anointing of your Holy Spirit and leading them, O oh Lord, by your righteous right hand, O oh Lord God, to do your will according to thy word and to fulfill the purposes, Lord, that you have for them in and through them, O oh Lord God. We thank you for their lives. Thank you, Lord, for uh, the ministry, O oh Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for their love for you and for your people, O oh Father, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for establishing them, Lord, in your truth, O oh Father, Lord God. And we pray, Lord, have your way in their lives, Lord. And Lord, may your good pleasing, perfect, and divine will be done in their lives for the glory of the Father. We thank you, Father. We give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray, Father. So for the bulletin, we meet uh, every Sunday in this church at 9 p.m. sharp. However, we do meet at 8.40. Sorry, can I repeat that? 9 a.m. sharp. And we do meet for a short uh, time of prayer at around 8.40. As many as if you can join, please do join in for a short time of prayer to bring in the service and preparation, prayer and prepare. When you come in, we would kindly like to request you to occupy the seats which are in the front as the seats can be left behind for those who come in late, just to accommodate them. The last two rows are kept specially for the families with kids and babies, so please be mindful of that. And yes, we have our lovely ushers to help us, so please follow their instructions as they guide you. All children should be seated with their families, so it's nice when you have your whole family seated with you together. We do also have a ministering team available. We have our dear Julius and Sister Susan who are available. Please approach them if you have a special need of prayer, counseling. Everything that you share with them is kept in confidence. We do also have our Zoom service. However, it's mainly for those people who are traveling or who are unwell. For the rest of us, Please, please, we need to come to church and uh, it's a nice uh, time when we come to church in unity and receive the God's blessing. We have a Bible study this week on Tuesday at 8 p.m. onwards. Please do join in as Pastor Charles sharing the book of James and it's the third week and we have a lot of questions, queries. Uh, it also helps us to grow in the Lord, so please do join in for the Bible study. I'll hand over to Pastor Charles now for the further announcements. Morning, Church. Uh, before I go into a further uh, announcement, we have from our Kannada Church, we have Pastor Suresh here. Would you please stand and all the 
our people from our Kannada church. Would you please stand? Please stand, please stand. All those from Kannada church, yes. Yes. Thank you for coming in. Please be seated. We also have uh, from our Abu Dhabi church, we have a few of our friends visiting from New Life Lush Abu Dhabi, Sheldon and uh, friends. Would you please stand? All those from Abu Dhabi church. Uh, only one. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think we also have Avil here with us for the first time. Would you please stand? We would like to church. This is Avil. Yes. Um, so uh, we do have next week, we have um, uh, one of our favorite pastor. Uh, he's actually, uh, you know, we call him pastor. And uh, though he's a professor of SABC, uh, but he calls every students by their name and he don't forget their names. After my graduation, I met him after like seven, eight years and he was like, Charles, what are you doing here? I was surprised. I forgot his name. <laughs> he did not forget my name. So that's an, it's a, when I came and I met Pastor Sunny, we came to know that we both are his students. But next week, he is coming here all the way from Bangalore. Um, he is here for a different conference. And so when he came, I requested him, would you please come to my church? And he said, definitely. So that's like, by the way, last year when I called him to come to church, he said, I, am, I already have one bypass surgery is over and I, doctor advised me not to come, not to travel anymore um, for the rest of my life. But it is joy to have him here. So next week, request you to pray for him. We will have him, um, you know, having in our service. So he'll be taking the subject on what is God like. All right. And um, uh, for uh, this week, we will also have, because this is for all the worship team. Today evening, we are meeting <coughs> at uh, the venue, which has already been mentioned in your WhatsApp group. Uh, also, I request you that this week, we will have a a session with Pastor Sunny Prasad um, uh, this week, one of the evening. Uh, so we are yet to finalize those things. But I request you to please, um, please be aware and please do come. This will be a blessing for you. Um, I know. How many of you enjoyed the worship this day morning? And I know some of you may be thinking, Pastor, just continue it. You know, just don't stop it. Yesterday I was talking to him, he said that one place he went and the worship started in the morning and even in the evening the worship was continuing. They did not stop the worship, like the Osbury revival. So I was like, wow, that would be great. All right, so, uh, so request you to please stay tuned and all the worship team and all those people who, are, who want to come and be part of it. You're all, not just for the worship team, anybody who wants to come. We'll plan it, I'll be sending it across to all of you. All right, did I miss anything? Yes, so we have the youth meeting, which is happening right after the service. We'll be having it in this place itself. So I request all the youths, please do not go. Ushers, please make sure that none of the youths go out of that gate. Please close the door. Okay, so all the youths, young youths, older youths, CBS, third, fourth, fifth groups, anybody, please come forward and be seated. We will have um, Pastor Sunny ministering to each one of you and also I would request you for the parents if you are you are most welcome to join I know you are all youth yesterday I spoke to a 65 year old person and I asked him uh, this is for the youth we have a youth meeting so can I come I said you are uh, 65 pastor I'm young so I was like yeah compared to you I look old that is a different uh, thing altogether so yeah you are also most welcome so, oh, by the way, anybody can join in. Uh, if you want to go, you can leave, no problem. Uh, because I think we have the worship team uh, meeting outing today evening. Uh, so, th even for that, if you want to go and take rest and come. But not for the youths, everybody have to be here. So, that's for the youth meeting. All right, so without taking much of the time, let me just introduce um, my icon. Uh, <laughs> we met in Bangalore a couple of times. He was ministering in the last conference with Pastor Sam, and he was alive. And we still remember it was 2018 November Pastors Conference, uh, where he was ministering, and it was amazing. So I 
I just looked at to him and I was like, wow, this is nice. Uh, so he is Dr. Sunny Prasad, and he's the president of Enrich Worship Music Academy, a ministry that specializes in catering to the needs of local church in the areas of worship and music. So in and around Bangalore, in and around India and abroad, he actually goes and ministers um, uh, with regard to worship and music. He's also an ordained minister of Assemblies of God Church, serving as a youth and worship coordinator for the Central District Council of South India Assemblies of God. And apart from teaching, he has a worship leadership course at different Bible colleges he conducts. And he specializes in developing resources for worship ministry, which includes audio, video lessons, handbooks for musical instruments, songbooks. So uh, yesterday when I was talking, he, I, I, when I went to Bangalore 20, 20, 2009, we had this um, Canada songbook with the chord. So I was wondering, wow, somebody has this. So yesterday I came to know it was him who did that work. He did the songbook with the chords for all the Canada uh, songs. So, so he does that for chord charts and worship songs. He is also a doctorate in ministry from SABC. So that's how we are associated with Pastor Jacob Chirin. Okay, he resides in Bangalore and he is married to his wife Sunita and she is also a family life educator uh, and a wonderful person uh, and a very warm person she is from the day I, this is the first time I'm meeting her but from the time I'm meeting her I know that she is a very spirit-filled and warm person and she makes you feel very comfortable. They are blessed with two beautiful daughters, Shruti, Tuti and Shreya. Sorry, Tuti and Shreya. And by the way, when they came here, the children are there. I would request you to pray for the children, especially the younger one is like, no, I'm missing my dad and mom. Uh, so they are at Bangalore at this point of time. I request you to pray for them. Before Pastor Sunny Prasad comes forward and minister to us, by the way, today the service will go a little extended. I request you to please bear bear with this. And before I request Pastor Sunny to come forward, can I request Sister Sunita uh, to come forward and just greet the church? Praise the Lord Church. It's such a joy to be here for us. Thank you, Pastor Charles, for your invitation. And thank you. It's a beautiful church. Nice to see all your wonderful and beautiful faces here. Thank you. Uh, so I just wanted to give a small greeting. Uh, I just read the verse, year of divine restoration. Uh, and it is so true. It's only a God who can restore us. God who can deliver us. And I just want to share a small testimony of how we saw that happen in our lives. Just a few days back, my father passed away. March 13th, my dad, after battling liver cancer, went to be with the Lord. And uh, uh, my dad, all through his life, he lived as an atheist, hardcore atheist. One who didn't believe in the Lord. Uh, one who would always say, even if he say something, he would say, yeah, I'll go to hell. What's there? Uh, so that, that was the uh, place that he was in. Wouldn't want to walk in the ways of the Lord. My mother, all her life, she prayed for my father. All her life, she shared the good news with my father, but never saw it happen two years back. My mom went to be with the Lord. So she never saw that happen. And even few months back, uh, you know, even though we had the hope, we had the prayer, we were still praying for my dad, we never saw anything happening. But just three months back, even before my dad uh, been, came to know that my dad had liver cancer, daddy gave his life to the Lord. He just turned over completely. I mean, it was an amazing transformation because so many years of prayer. You know, my mom prayed and prayed and prayed. She was a prayer warrior and she used to just pray and pray and pray. And we all prayed for my dad and we came to know that God does answer prayers. No matter what. Yes, uh, you know, prayer goes beyond your lifetime. That's what I came to know. My mom came she lived and she went to be with the Lord, but it went beyond her lifetime. Somebody who we never thought will come to the Lord, never thought. 
you know what a transformation that was the last pictures of dad that we got to see was he kneeling down beside his bed you know he's weak uh, with liver cancer he is totally weak and yet he would kneel down and pray unto the lord through the night he'll be singing worship songs what a transformation this is called divine restoration you know god can restore the God can restore the broken. I just want to encourage church. You have been praying. Don't give up praying. You know, you, you might have not seen the results. You might have not seen the answers coming your way. Don't give up praying. No matter what your situation is, one thing that I want to encourage, one thing that I carry from my mother is a spirit of prayer. That is what I want to be known as more than anything, that I want to be a woman of prayer. And I just encourage each one of you. There is more power and prayer than anything else when you kneel down and when you cry out to god god does answer prayers you might not see it happening immediately uh, or uh, the answers might not come at the pace that you are expecting it but god is a god of restoration all the years that the locusts have eaten i want to assure you the lord will give it back if you are here hoping for that answer i just want to tell you don't give up continue to pray and you will see it happen praise god praise god thank you wow that was nice that was like a you know mini version of the message and i request you now that is my desire like how sister sunita shared that is my desire that not church young women can come up forward and share the goodness of the lord and lead the worship i think somebody is not happy about that but well that's my desire that's my passion to see everybody lifting the name of jesus thank you sister sunita for i know last week by the way we as a church we prayed for your dad and uh, i announced it in the church that request your prayers and they have been praying <clears throat> and 13th he passed away and they were still willing to come i th i was thinking on 13th i thought this is not going to happen um and i was about to cancel the entire thing and in the middle of the funeral service pastor gives me a call we are on we are coming and i was like oh my god <laughs> this is good <clears throat> then i asked him pastor so i think it will be like not possible for sister to come and she said visa is already taken for sister i was like oh nice so now i think nothing is stopping and today we have pastor Sunny here, a good friend of mine, a good friend of Pastor Sam. Okay, can we just put our hands together and welcome as he shares the word of God? That will break in the time. Praise the Lord, Church. God has been good to us, and I really want to take time to thank uh, Pastor Charles. He's been pursuing me. from the happy new year moment from the month of jan will you come to dubai and uh, and um, put that seed please come please come i kept shifting the dates from march and we said march march first week became march second week then i said can you push it to march third week then i said can you push it to may then i may may not come and so uh, then he said no may is too then at last we we said march 15th we'll seal it whatever happens we'll take a call and so he said that and i knew uh, whatever happened in our timeline yes it's painful it's grievous but uh, god is with us and oh probably god wants to say something in this one service one word from the lord can change our lives one word one thought can change your life one thought that man was with the swine the prodigal son that we say he almost put his hand into the pig's food and then he thought to myself or himself if i go to daddy's house one thought what am i doing squandering the wealth and if i can take pick myself up one thought changed his life that woman was bleeding for 12 years no proposals no offer no visas to go to dubai abu dubai you know opposite of dubai those days we used to say nothing was happening she was shrinking on her own bed 
little monitor, please. Yeah, some nice Pentecostal volume. By now you know how I'm screaming. Some of you are already praying for me. Yeah. Check one, two. Yeah, it will come. On the monitors. Yeah, thank you. She said Jesus was passing by. She only thought if I can pick up myself, get out of this bed, walk down. I won't even touch his body. I will touch the hem of his garment. If I touch him, he will become unclean because she knew the old school, the law. One thought. I don't know what it is today. If you, if you can come up with that one thought. Lord, take it all. Lord, I offer myself. Lord, your plan, your wisdom. One thought can change your life. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say one thought. One thought. One thought. Yeah, we can we have the PPT please? <clears throat> today I would like to speak on the move of God. If God moves, the first thing we need to do is sell our watches. And then stick to our chairs, yeah. So as pastor said, the service will be extended. You know, sometimes I feel I need to preach like Paul. He preached in the midnight. Somebody fell from the third floor. Thank God we are not on the third floor. You are sitting on the chair. If you fall from the chair, I can lift you up. Falling from the third floor, I will hand it over to Pastor Charles. He will take care of that. So, I want to speak on the more of God. This is the stirring that is there in my heart. And I want to sow the seed. I humble myself as I stand. I know... I know this is the heartbeat of God and heartbeat of your leaders and heartbeat of your pastor and heartbeat of the elders and heartbeat of everybody. We want to see God move. Nothing will satisfy unless he moves. We can have sound, we can have screeching and screaming, we can have the who's who's, we can have the fortune list, we can have the big names, but until he comes, church will not take forward. Until he comes and does something in our heart. I want to talk about the move of God. Let me crisp the whole church movement of the last 500 years. And let me put it down very quickly in these five letter words that we have. Now, we begin here. I'm going to be on a little you know, fourth gear. And uh, thank God for all the gadgets that we have. Just in case you want to listen to the sermon again, please go ahead. And sometimes I need to listen to my own sermon. Right after the end of the service, we, this, is, this is the place of the altar. I request you, we will come. If the Spirit of God has stirred you up and you say, I want to see a move of God in my life. I'm tired and I want God and His glory, His grace, His wisdom, His power, His spirit. We will spend some time praying and seeking God. Just that one touch from Him. We will never be the same again. I just want to sum up how God moves and about our church so I'm taking the analysis of 500 years of our history, church history, right from Reformation. Put it down and I want to emphasize one word today. One word. And uh, my wristwatch is not happening. I so like your building because there's no clock on the wall. Keep it up, you know. For preachers like us, it gives a solace. I'm searching. There's no clock, right? Yeah. There's no one showing a board. It is finished. Yeah. No one. Yeah. No one on the keyboard to say it is done. And so... Uh, we will close the service appropriately because the youth also are going to be there. And my wife was always scared when I hold the mic. Yeah, uh, She says, come Lord Jesus, very much. So, so you know. Yeah. Whenever monitors, can I get some more on the mon mon This monitors is not, not uh, I'm not getting the, yeah. The fire has to come. Yeah, a little more. Check one. Yeah, it is working. Can you pump it up a little please? Thank you. Thank you. Check. Yeah. Check one, one, little more. Check. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you for giving the Assemblies of God volume. Yeah, it was on the new life level. So we, we all are cousins as a movement. I sat with your late leader in his room and he was so gracious and generous to talk with a young preacher like me. I don't even have a mustache and a beard. Your pastor has that. And so he was encouraging and said, no, we need you. Come and minister to us. And I really like the warmth from the New Life Fellowship. And uh, by God's grace, I've been doing a little circuit around. And then we were both, my wife and I, we were in Doha last May at one of the new life. I think Pastor Ranjit was there. And uh, and uh, some connections. Thank God for the way he divinely orchestrates things in your life. Point number one, whenever, whenever God chooses to do something on the planet, he always looks for a man or a woman. And I'll tell you what God will do through them. Whenever God chooses to intervene, interact, intercept into the affairs of mankind, he looks for a man or a woman. 
If you say pray for Afghanistan, or you say pray for North Korea, you say pray for Kazakhstan, you say pray for that community, this community, God does not come. His protocol, His mindset, His pattern of working is partnership with man. God needs you. God needs you. Not Google, not Microsoft. God needs you. If God has to do anything anywhere on this planet earth without the cooperation of a man, God would not. That is God. And whenever God chooses a man, he would grant him a mission. If our life is only about making money, I think we miss the agenda. If all that we have in life is only money, we are very cheap. If all that you strive for in life is only some dollars and pounds, we are very cheap. Life is bigger than that. COVID has taught that. COVID has taught that all our, all our tinglings cannot, cannot save. Whenever God chooses you, he puts his mission into you. You are programmed for a purpose beyond your understanding. So you are called, no matter who you are, let me tell you, there is a calling of God over your life. And it's just not here. I want to give you the express purpose for which God brought you here. Somewhere I want to clear the haze in the air and say, look beyond whatever you're doing today. Because God has chosen you. So every church begins with a man. And when the mission comes, he will pay the price. Third that happens to any church is movement. Say movement. Turn to your neighbor and say movement. Movement. If a mother... A woman is pregnant with a child and she's hit five months or three months or seven months. Whenever she goes for the hospital checkup, the doctor checks for movement. If they are unable to identify movement in the womb, it could be that the baby is not living. Whenever there's no movement in the church, whenever there's no movement in your life, whenever there's no movement in your spirit, it is as good as you are fill up the blank. If you say, Pastor Sunny, it's been a long time, I'm pray I've prayed, I'm not getting that fire, I don't have the zeal, I've lost the passion. Somewhere five, six, seven years ago, I came to this, this, this country, somewhere I lost the, lost, the, lost the passion. I want to tell you, this very dangerous moment. Whenever you don't have movement, the church moves to the next stage called the machine stage. Machine stage, Kanada or Bandida ಕಾಣದಲ್ಲಿ ಒಂದು ಎರಡು ಮಾತು ಹೇಳಿ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಮುಂದೆ ಹೋಗೋಣ ಅಂತ ಬಯಸ್ಕೊತ ಇದ್ದೀನಿ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಮೈ ನಮ್ಮ ಮಾತೃಭಾಷೆ ತೆಲುಗು ತೆಲುಗುಲಿ ಅವ್ರನ್ನ ಉಂಟೆ ಇಕ್ಕಡ ಹೋಗ ರೆಂಡ್ ಎವರು ಉಣ್ಣಾರ ತೆಲುಗು ಆಂಧ್ರ ಕಾರಂ ಪುಡಿ ಯಾ ಬಾಗುಣ್ಣಾರ ಮೈ ವೈಫ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ತಮಿಳಿಯನ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಶಿ ಕುಡನ್ ಫೈಂಡ್ ಅ ಗುಡ್ ತಮಿಳ್ ಬಾಯ್ ಶಿ ಮ್ಯಾರೀಡ್ ಅ ತೆಲುಗು ವೇನೋ ದಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಐ ಹ್ ಗಾಟ್ ದ ಮೈಕ್ ನಾವು ಐ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸೇ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಯಾ ವೆನ್ ಶಿ ಗೆಟ್ಸ್ ದ ಮೈಕ್ ಶಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸೇ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಶಿ ವಾಂಟ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ತಮಿಳ್ ಕಾರಂಗ್ ಇರ್ಕಂಗಿಲ್ಲ ಹಿಂಗ ಸೊ ರೆಂಡು ಇರ್ಕಾಂಗಲ್ಲ ಹಿಂಗ ಆಮಾರ ಮೈ ನೈಮ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಂಡಿ ಪ್ರಸಾದ್ ಮೆನಿ ಆಫ್ ದ ಮಲಯಾಳಿ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಥಿಂಕ್ ದಟ್ ಐ ಬಿಲಾಂಗ್ ಟು ಯುನೈಟೆಡ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೇರಳ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯು ನೋ ಐ ನೋ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಕಾಂಪ್ಲಿಕೇಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಬಟ್ ನೋ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಯು ನೋ ಸೊ ಇಫ್ 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 ಯು ಆರ್ ಇನ್ ಬ್ಯಾಂಗಲೋ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಯು ಗೆಟ್ ಫೋರ್ ಫೈವ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜಸ್ ಎಸ್ ಎ ಗಿಫ್ಟ್ ಯಾ ಟೂ ಡ್ರಾಪ್ಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಫಾಲ್ ಇನ್ ಯೋರ್ ಟಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ movement whenever you do, don't don't have the movement you come to the stage called machine in kannada it's called ade raga hade haadu sing the same song sit in the same place same row you know same clapping you know same verse psalm 23 verse 7 whether it's there or not keep preaching you know it's the same your prayer is bless the bulb bless the uh, bless the curtain bless the everybody bless lord and in tamil there's one nice word kodana kodi stotram oh my in one line you finish stotram like that other guys are telling praise the lord praise the lord they write kodana kodi finish we've got the same clichés we don't move it's there only it's like it's like it's like prophet eli he was sitting in the chair saying for 40 years there were no visions there were no dreams there was no passion no bible study no prayer no fasting no breaking it just goes off machine stage i come i work i bless i give i keep going eat drink sleep eat drink sleep same prayer 
Same thing. And what happens next, whenever you're hitting that stage in your spirit, if you recognize this morning, I'm just doing the same thing. Nothing, nothing, nothing changed in my life. I don't see that I'm climbing the mountain. I kind of feel the passion is weaning. What's wrong with me? Machine stage. Everything going the same way, I don't see. Beware because the next stage is very dangerous. So some of the churches you see, we, they do the same thing, same thing, same thing, same thing. Anytime you disturb that, they get angry. They get frustrated. They say, I will leave. No, this is how we used to do from 1971. That's how it is. Don't even come. Anyone who changes that, they don't like it. Because they arrive at the next stage called the monument stage. Monument stage is a stage where you only talk about the past. Nothing moves in monuments. That's the most dangerous stage of any church history, of any church movement, of any church denomination. Whenever there's no movement in our service, if you announce and say, next Sunday we have service as usual, it's a very dangerous statement. Every service is unusual. As usual, we meet for Bible study Tuesday 8 to 9. As usual, when God comes in, something unusual will happen. And if you have reached a monument stage, it's like looking at Gandhi's statue and telling Gandhi, sir, take one step. He's almost walking but never walks. He's almost there with the stick. He, he's, he, he, he. Even if you pray for 40 days, he will never move because you reached a monument stage. And I want to tell you, if at all a church has to keep going, if you have to move forward, there should be that third stage. I've come today in the name of Jesus just to trigger that. Just to say, don't be satisfied. Just to say that do not see and believe what you see. Things of God are beyond that. And if you want to see the move of God in your lifetime, so that's why the reason I'm screaming like this, because it is etched in my spirit. And this is the tone that I'm having for the last 10 decades, or one decade, 10 years. Oh God, when will I see you move? I'm screaming. I shout Jesus. I sing and sing and play. I even scold the musicians. I'm so desperate. Will you crack the sky and come down? I want to see you move. How long to talk about revival in Korea? How long to talk about revival in Africa? How long to study books? How long to do a doctorate? How long, oh God, won't you open the sky? Come down legitimately. Come down with all your glory and power. I want to see that. I'm not, I'm not interested in the books. Thank God for the books. Thank God for the songs. What's wrong with us Indians, brown-skinned people? Why should we only get that, move there, talk about that? If God is real, if power is real, if something is authentic about this word of God, let it come to pass in and through our life. For that, I want to give you one strategy today. That's all is my assignment. What kind of man God is looking for? What kind of woman God is looking for? I like this verse. 2 Chronicles 16.9 I know our media team is capturing the stage should I only stick to this region? Yeah, we can, we can go around. Can I come down also? Difficult? I'm sorry after putting you on the spot. I just feel like coming close to you. Yeah. But if it's too much, no, don't worry, brother. I'll stick. I kind of feel a little lonely alone here. Yeah. I want to cross the Red Sea. Is okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You have the staff of Moses with you? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, yeah. yeah. Can I see you smiling, please? Please don't be with, angry with me. We are going away very soon. It's better that I go away because our teacher is coming next week. You know, I am, I am, I'm only a forerunner. I'm unworthy to tie his, uh, untie his shoelace. I don't know whether he wears shoes or not, but uh, please greet him. He messaged me this morning and he, he said, praying for you as you're ministering. So, Pastor Jacob Cherin is a treat for us. In his class, we hesitate to blink our eye. And uh, next Sunday, bring all your laptop, uh, you know, CPU, everything, and put it down and enjoy the service. So he's one of the unique preachers that we have and professors that we have. Praise the Lord. Let's get into this. Second Chronicles 16.9. The eyes of the Lord search the whole world. 7.2 billion people. The eyes of the Lord is searching. As if God is longing to see somebody, he puts on this Google search engine verse. And he says he wants to search. He wants to search every country. 246, 47 
countries around the world. And what kind of people he's looking for? He's looking for those who are fully committed. The word committed means attached to. Attached to. God cannot work with people who are half committed. Whenever you solemnize a marriage, the boy and the girl, they hold their hands together. And the boy says, all that in, 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 in sickness, in, in this, in that, till death do us part. He holds the girl and says, I give you my pledge. He will never say with three other girls because he's committed to only one. And after the pastor said, will you take this woman to be a wedded wife? He says, I, after half an hour, do I? No, it's not there. It calls commitment. Right after that exchange of vows, a recipe that's so divine, he's committed to the woman. No matter she's aging, no matter she's big, small, no matter whatever it is, commitments, you're attached. That's the word there. God works with people who are willing to be committed. James chapter 4 verse 4, you're going to have a Bible study. When you come to that, the pastor James begins the whole congregation verse like this. You adulterers. Just imagine Sunday morning, that's the key verse for the service. You adulterers. And you remove this banner and put the word you adulterers. How it will be? Half the congregation empty, other half is waiting with AK-47. Who is the one who wrote that poster? Get him out. You are, don't you know that friendship with the world is enmity towards God? You cannot serve two masters. You cannot smooch the world and come here, lift our hands and blow kisses unto God. No way. That's, that, that, that kind of people, God cannot work. If there's a generation, if there's a generation that is wholehearted to God, he's the one. I want to tell you how that flow happens. Commitment. There is no way you can keep one foot here and one foot there. Sold out unto the master. Committed people are the one the Lord is looking for. How can? How can? If I say I love Sunita, then go off sometimes, then go to Punita, then Anita, then Savita, then Sarita. Come back in the evening, 7 o'clock and say, Amma, I was thinking about you from morning. Your name was imprinted on the wall. What is that called? Flirtatious. Sometimes we come to the house of God. Judas was like that. He served the Lord thousand days. At one point he goes to the chief priests and teachers of the law and he said, What are you willing to give me? What are you willing to give me if I get rid of Jesus? Ah, what are you willing to give me? The question he asked was, Do you have anything better than Jesus? I will get rid of him. After thousand days of ministry with him. The chief priests and Pharisees of the law, they knew the technique. They went to the side room, a vestry, and then they started counting 30 silver coin. Judas began to hear the sound. And he said, Macha, this sound is what I was waiting for. The sound of the silver grew louder than the sound of the Savior. I want to challenge everybody here. You know you're working. I know we need money. I know we need a job. I know we need positions. But what sound is appealing to you as far as commitment is concerned? Is the sound of the silver raising its decibels in your spirit or you still have the sound of the Savior? Very soon he gave up. After walking with Jesus, we come to church, we worship. Why? Why is it? What is your heartbeat when you live in this land? Is there anything else that, that triggers you? Anything else that grips your heart? Is the sound of the Savior and Jesus so fascinating, fascinating you that you're willing to lay your life down? Commitment is the key. Let me tell you something here. And I'll keep moving on to the, to the main point I have. Pastor, thank you. There's no clock. My watch also is not there. My wife also did not give her watch also. Her watch also, yeah, thank God. Listen to this. I'm going to be a little, little here and there, a little tangent to come here. Whenever, I was telling this to the worship team yesterday. Whenever you mingle with the spirit, the spirit woos you. Whenever, whenever you mingle with a spirit being, either evil spirit or holy spirit, you begin to be drawn to him. That's how the spirit realm works. And I want to expose that little bit or probably highlight on that little bit today. 
So whenever you come to God, you cannot be 50-50. Either you're drawn to Him. Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. I no longer live. Christ lives in me. Christ lives in me. The life that I live is it's not my life. The life that I live, I live by faith in the Son of God. Like, I, I've crucified. I've been drawn to His purpose. No wonder the men of old in, in, in heavenly ranking, they were willing to give up everything. Peter would say, we gave up everything to follow you. Your purpose, your kingdom is our agenda. I'm calling us for that kind of commitment. If at all, we've got to see the move of God. God is looking for that kind of man. And whenever there is no lack of those men, we never have the move of God. I pray that some of them from this fellowship will have that red hot burning liquid fire. That they will move with that passion to say, God, unless you come, I'm sold out for you and you alone. Even if I don't get anything in return from you, you are my highest passion that I have. If you want to see the move of God in your generation. I pray that I will find that grace to see. There is no pain. You know that no gain when there is no pain. May God give us the grace. Let me hurry up. If you can get this picture today, somehow understand this, you will know the workings of God in our generation. That's what I want to just download from my spirit this morning. This image is very strange, but can anybody guess what's happening in this image? Glory of God. Fantastic. Glory of God. What is this? Glory of man. Yeah, could be. Anyone, any, any, any guesses this side? Sunshine. Sunshine. Light. One more guess. I mean, it's a very wild guess. Anybody? Colors. No darkness. Good. All answers are right because the question was vague. This picture, I, I want us to somehow connect to the Garden of Eden. Now, let me slowly get inside and highlight the main key for today. In the Garden of Eden, Garden of Eden is a special bubble. It's not there now. God has sealed it. But he created a zone, a special, something called the SCZ or whatever you want. It's a bubble by itself where the realm of God and the realm of man would meet. That's how God created you and me. That's the iota, the DNA with which God somehow programmed us. And in the Garden of Eden, the realm of God is called the spiritual realm. The realm of man is called the natural realm. And both would interject and intersect. And so much so that in Genesis chapter 3 verse 10, Adam and Eve could hear the footsteps of God, God walking to them, God talking to them in the cool of the day. God would download his divine scroll, the divine mandate into them and Adam and Eve were asked to go and dominate the earth. That's the agenda of God. And when you're going to your workplaces, when you're going here, God brought you here for this. Now let me explain what it is, how to live in the Garden of Eden and what we lost in the Garden of Eden. This is, this is the whole Garden of Eden. You have the spiritual realm, the realm of God. And you have the physical realm, the realm of man. Let me tell you a story to understand, to highlight this. There was a hunter you went, who went to the jungle. He couldn't catch anything that day, so he climbed up a tree and found an egg. So he said, this is the catch for the day. So he came in and put the egg among the chicken or the chicks. The mother hen hatched that and out came an eaglet. He didn't know that that was an eaglet. I was sorry, the egg of an eagle. So the eaglet started growing with the chicks and picking the ground. Because that's what he saw. All around the chicks are picking the ground. The picking the ground is the natural, the physical realm. That's all to go in the morning. Go and pick the ground and look down and search for worms and seeds and grain and come back again, rest. Doing that over and over again, picking the ground until one day he heard a sound in the sky. The mother eagle began to call. Cry out loudly and tell the little one, Hey eaglet, come up, you can fly, you can fly. Your realm is different, you can fly. But the eaglet, the baby one would see and say, no, 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 no. 
I grew up here. This is me. This is my background. This is my tradition. This is all from my grandfather. This is what we were doing. Pick the ground, pick the ground, pick the ground. I am that denomination. I am this language. I am that background. I am this caste. Keep picking the ground. But the mother eagle would cry and say, No, you have the grace to soar. You have the dynamics to crack through gravity. Come up and fly. Eaglet would not believe. Until one day, it began to look at the skin and compare it with the chicken and say, No, I am different. I want to tell you, you are different. You are not like those outside. You've got a different iota. You know what we did as we celebrate the covenant? Something happened to us in the name of Jesus. As what Sunita was telling about restoration. Restore means bring back that which was lost. That, that, that eagle had lost all its senses that it can fly. And one day it went up to a rock. And said let me try. The realm is calling me. The realm is calling me. Pushed itself. And started beginning to flap its wing. And straight into the sun. Eagle flies into the sun. And begins to say, this is what I've been created for. The realm of the spirit is so superior. Church of the living God. I present to you from the bottom of my heart. We've been striving in the natural. Let me give you two examples of the realm. Two examples. On the Christmas time, we have a favorite verse. What's the favorite verse for you in the Christmas? Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Genesis 3.20. No. Any verse? Christmas verse? For unto us. Yeah. What, which verse is that? Isaiah. Isaiah 9. Five, six. Isaiah 9, 6. Yeah, you can have a biryani all by yourself. Don't share it to anybody. Yeah. Isaiah 9, 6. Watch this. Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Isaiah prophesies this. How many years before? 700 years before. That means look at this man. Connected with the realm of the spirit. He travels 700 years. He sees Jesus' birth. He's got a strange spiritual intelligence that he picks up the signals in the spirit, comes up and pens it down and says to the people of Israel, for unto us a child is born. The government will be on his shoulder. His name shall be called. How is this possible? We don't function in the natural. The realm of the spirit is calling us. That's what the church is different. That's why you invite people to come in because God works in that realm. Second example I want to tell you. Peter was walking or, or just casting the net. Jesus comes by and says, hey Peter, hey Peter. Follow me. And, I, and I've, I've seen something in the spirit about you, Peter. You're not Simon. You're the rock, you're Peter. I will make, I will make, I will make you fisher of men. You're, you're, you're a fisher of fish. Fisher of men is not there in any encyclopedia. He sees him thousand days ahead. Wow, he sees him there in the future and he picks up the signal and he tells Peter, Peter, this is not you. I want to tell many of you, what you're doing is really not who you are. What you've come here for is completely different. God has got a divine agenda. And Jesus was functioning from the realm of the spirit and he said, hey Peter, if you follow me, that realm will descend on you. If you follow me, you're not just a Galilean. If you follow me, it's just not that you have a boat and, and, and some fish and some business and you have some LLC company happening. No, Peter. Unless, can we go back to that uh, PPT? Unless the spiritual realm and the physical realm meet, Christian life is not possible. Can I get two chairs? Oh, we have those two chairs. Can we pick it up? Get those children chairs, please. Yeah. If this is the spiritual realm and this is the natural, this is you, your house, your business, your, your, your occupation, your family, your work, you're not asked to live like this. 
living christian life only with this is living with the flesh and the strength of the flesh jesus never said us to live like this in fact jesus told his disciples i lectured you for three and a half years but don't do ministry as of now and listen until the realm of the spirit superimpose superimpose means comes upon you if this does not happen don't start ministry romans 8 is about this some people call this the baptism of the holy spirit some say infilling of the holy spirit some say walking in the spirit some say being filled by the whole this is it christian life is drudgery without this experience without this realm superimposing on you jesus said don't even do the agenda my agenda today that's what we want to pray after some time of preaching we want to pray that this realm will come over you you'll get that divine intelligence to lead your life that you will be plugged in to that realm so that that realm will come and you become a conduit for god is searching what did jesus say about prayer he said pray whenever you pray pray this way our father in heaven hallowed be thy name and then he said what your kingdom your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven so the move of god is not just horizontal the move of god is from there the move from his realm flows through you if that is not happening we are gone we are dead we have no life in the church if there is no move of the spirit now look at this we have many pictures of the holy spirit but genesis 1 2 the earth was void darkness was on the surface of the deep and the spirit of god was was moving hovering moving the first description of the holy spirit of god we have is he moves <laughs> he moves if we don't have the move of the spirit in our generation we are gone we lose it and so i pray i want to ask you genuinely heartfelt have you seen and felt and 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 and, and traveled with the spirit of the living god the realm of the spirit let me go down a little bit i just want to explain the realm here whenever you begin to pray and begin to seek god begin to worship a realm surrounds you the realm of the spirit surrounds you now the the spirit realm is not only holy spirit you have even the evil spirit I don't know if some of you are still entangled with this kind of realm and you say I can't sleep I've got nightmares I've got fear of death I've got spirit of suicide I want to give up on life my marriage is cracking my husband is leaving I don't have got some mental oppression is the realm Sometimes we take too many tablets from the physical and we forget to deal with the realm of the spirit Today let me give you a little bit insight How do you understand the spiritual realm it's just like an antenna the moment we landed here in dubai our networks will not operate as much as your networks will operate you have etisalat and you have do and the moment your device connects to that network you get a download some of us are connected to so much the very unclean fleshly diabolic demonic networks and we say why god is not touching me unless you remove that sim card and some of the sim cards are broken some of your relationships are broken you will never get the download of god i'm sorry to be a little more house fourth right here the moment you connect to the realm of god you begin to get a download from his spirit without that move of the spirit please you cannot lead a christian life it's not worth it to be a christian if we don't have that that download that is that we get connected to him now eh let me go down to a biblical example this name is Saul God couldn't work with Saul because of this is what happened to him when God told him I have a prophecy for you God wanted to establish Saul's kingdom over Israel for how many time? All time. He had a prophecy. Do you know that prophecies can get cancelled? This is one of the examples from the Bible. 
Just because you got some man of God came in and if we don't have, we don't fertilize it and nurture it, these things will not happen. Let's go closely. Saul was asked to wait at battle of Michmash. He failed. And then when he was cracking up, I want to tell you the kind of people God is looking for. When I saw, this is what Saul said, what have you done? He didn't wait. He went and sacrificed by himself. When I saw men were scattering, and I thought Philistines will come down against me at Gilgal. Then I felt compelled to offer the burnt offering. What's the common denominator in these three words? I. I thought, I felt, I saw, I. God can never work with anybody who's got an inflated ego. The kind of people God is looking for are those who are willing to have a brokenness. A broken ego is one that is so, so, so malleable in God's hand that he begins to operate. If you want to see the move of God, God is looking for hearts that are obedience. 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 The middle word for obedience is die. D-I-E. Unless you conduct a funeral service of yourself and of your ego, of your pride, God can never move. Do you want that to connect with that realm? That realm wants to touch some of us today. And God wants to do something so serious in your life. And every time he comes, he blesses you because of our inflated. We are so self-obsessed. Insatiable desire for self-prominence. That is pride. God can never work in this generation. Brokenness. Whenever God begins to do something in your life, he will lead you to a school of brokenness. Brokenness is the prerequisite for building. And for that realm to operate in your life, if at all we want to see the move of God. Hold on, I will just give a little example as we slowly construct this message. When Saul did not deal with the Amalekites, this is what God said. I anointed you king over Israel. I sent you for a mission to wipe out the Amalekites. To wage war until you wipe them out. But you pounced on the plunder. You failed in your mission. What is the failure came? Because I will skip this. Because he went on to build a monument. The day Saul built a monument. Remember I told you that sequence. The moment he touched the monument stage. My achievements my victory, my plan, my thought, my kingdom, and all it's going to be written about me in the chronicles of Israel. The day he touched this stage, he lost the kingdom. I pray today God will take us to that school of brokenness. He's calling you. Church is calling you. Unless we lay those things aside, we will never see the move of God. Let me come to the real deal here. If you want to see the move of God, We need an altar. Somebody say altar. Altar. Unless we as a church build an altar, we will not have that realm working in us. Altar is a divine technology. What is an altar? Altar attracts or activates the spirit realm. It is true for evil spirits it is true for Holy Spirits. Listen to me carefully. A few more minutes as we pray. An altar attracts the spirit realm. If you have demonic altars, pastor was talking about it in communion. They had the table that is the altar for demons. They attract, so altars are like antennas. They attract that kind of spirit. Let me advance myself and tell your prayer is an altar. You are an altar. Your church is an altar. Your nation is an altar. And whenever you set up an altar, you attract a realm. If that, why do we worship? Why do we preach? Why do we come like this? We interact with the altar. Our worship service is an altar. Why there is a space between the pulpit and the pew? This place is called the altar. You go to any big church cathedral and see. This is the altar. What do we say altar call? Come to the altar. This is the place of the altar. And whenever you come to the altar, you attract a realm. 
Some of us are not getting a breakthrough in our life. Some of us are so wayward. Some of us have lost focus because our altars are connecting to the wrong network. Let me go down to explain this. When God chose a man called Abraham, all that he did is he didn't take a battalion. He didn't take an army. He didn't take a business plan. He didn't go study an MBA. He didn't set up any shop. God gives him a brand new land. He says, come out of your land from Ur and go to the land of Canaan. What did Abraham do? All that Abraham did was build four altars. Dear church, I'm coming to the, to the main crux of the message. What did Abraham do? Set up an altar. He, say, he unlocked the realm over, over Canaan. He did not fight a physical battle. He had a divine strategy by the spirit. As long as there's an altar, there will be a spirit activity in the land. Only one war he did. And Abraham by faith, he did not see many children, only one child by the spirit. He did not see many multitude. He did not extend super borders and build great civilization. One thing that you learn the technology from Abraham is Abraham built an altar. Can I advance myself to tell you why God brought you here? In his, in, his, in his preeminence, in his foreknowledge, the way he planned for everybody here, he brought you to this strange land so that you will build an altar. What is an altar? What is an altar? Altar is a system or a setup where you have a legal point of contact between the realm of the spirit and the realm. Of the natural. If at all you want this realm to come. The realm of the spirit is dependent on an altar. Whenever the church does not have an altar. Whenever your home does not have an altar. Whenever your personal life does not have an altar. This realm will not visit you. Not forget visit. This realm will not descend upon you. The realm of the spirit good or evil. Is predicated upon an altar. Altar is something that is so hidden and spread and littered all across the pages of the scripture. If we want to see a move of God in this century, if our youngsters have to see the promise mentioned in Acts chapter 2 verse 37, 38, 39. If at all we want to talk something and utter even the word revival. If at all we want hearts changed. If at all we want to see unusual, legitimate, authentic healing and power ministry. Without altar it is impossible. I've discovered that in the ministry. Little bit I've done here. Little bit walking with the Lord. Little bit running around and serving. I've got to know that's why I'm preaching like this. Unless there is an altar. What happens at an altar? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Different, different definitions of an altar. Altar is an infrastructure that can host a spiritual environment. This room has got the potential to telecast some 700 channels. It's in the air. But if you can host a network, whatever news channel you, that's happening. What, tell me a channel that's very popular here in Dubai. What, what channel? CNN? Okay. CNN is in this room. But how do you get CNN here? You need to host it with a device. You need an antenna. You need a display TV, television. You bring that technology, you can host it. Same way, altar can host a spiritual realm. Altar can host a spiritual realm. That's an infrastructure. Unless and until you are able to build that altar. Calls them to the secret place called the altar. Whenever we lack in, in not preparing altar, you will never have the move of God. I challenge you in the name of Jesus. I prod you. I push you to say, if at all we, there is an altar, you will see a change in your church. Just look at, look at a couple of other, other, other definitions. Altar is a place of intersection between the realm of the spirit and the realm of man. Have you ever wondered why is, and, and sat down in the church and say, where are healings gone in our church? Where is the move of the spirit in our church? What's wrong with things that's happening? Have you come to the place and sat down on a Sunday and say, what's wrong with our worship? What's wrong with me? I go sit down sometimes alone and say, Lord, you have called me. All that I've done at age 16, I wanted to be a pilot. 
My dad was an aerospace scientist in National Aerospace uh, Limit Laboratories. He was already, two of my uncles were flying and they both died in the crash. And I, after 12th, took up this NDA form. I want to join the National Defense Academy. I tried to, then went to youth camp at age 16. I gave my life to the Lord. From 16 till now, I'll be 47 this year. The passion is there. Passion is there. Oh God, I want to see you move. I want to see something authentic. I don't want to get up and, and, and preach a hoax message. I, want, I don't want to go, go around preaching a cleverly crafted fable from somewhere to make believe. No, if you're true, oh God, let that power go out. Let that spirit move. Let something genuine happen in my lifetime. That's the heartbeat. For that to happen, you need to pay the price in building an altar. What's an altar? Altar is a great in the spirit. It's, it's a portal. It's a portal. Whenever you want that divine interaction, you can pray a lot, you can do a lot, but if you don't have an altar, we can read a lot of books, we can do a lot of messages, we can pray a lot of videos, we can do a lot of shows. As being as a youth coordinator for the state, I've done so much for young people. But I sit down as a failure to say, God, when do we see a move among our youth? I cry today when I see our young girls are disfigured, disflowered. Just before coming, I get a message, Pastor Sunny. How to help youngsters? This, this person is stuck up in adultery. This person is LGBT. I have to do some ministry outside the country. There, the main question is how to handle LGBT. So many painful questions, I can't even tell. And I'm asking God, when do we see a legitimate move? How long will we keep counseling? How long will we keep handing books? How long before you can come and give a genuine breakthrough? We need an altar. Three things happen when you set up an altar. Engage, exchange, and encounter. Let me speak from the lens of our Hindu friends. Our Hindus know this very well. Our Hindu friend will take one coconut in a plate, some flowers and fruits, pack it up. He goes to the pujari. He packs his prayer request and says, I want to pass this interview. I want to get this job. So the pujari will take this from him and go to the idol. And then, this is an altar, yeah? So he does his work telling some shlokas and in the process packs up his prayer request and speaks and keeps the fruits and the leaves and the flowers. And then he takes one laddu. It's called prasadam. That's where I get our name from. Prasad. Prasad is a gift from God. So what happened here? He built an altar. He takes it there. And then what happened? He keeps the plate and in exchange gets one laddu. Comes to the devotee and says, take this laddu. Your prayer is answered. God will help you. What happened there? Exchange. Why? There's an altar. Whenever there's an altar, there's always an exchange. Jesus said the same thing. Come to me all who are weary and heavy laden. I will give. What, what is that? Exchange. What happens in worship? That you lift your hands and begin to pray and cry. Exchange. When you're weak, I'm strong. My grace is sufficient. What was that? Exchange. Even though your sin be as scarlet, I will make it white as snow. What is that? Exchange. If you're thirsty, come to me. Isaiah 55. I will fill you. You will overflow. What is that? Exchange. John chapter 7, 37 to 39. If, you're, if you believe in me, streams of living waters will flow. Come to me who are thirsty. Exchange. So every time you come, prayer meeting is a place of exchange. Sunday morning service is a place of exchange. Why? Whenever there is an altar in the house, there is exchange. Our Hindu friends have become too smart. They put one room in their house called the puja room. What is that? Altar. They don't want to let their altar go. Look at the names. Go, go one, one again, one more trip to all of the, uh, our country and come. The names of the shops are the names of their gods. Why? Why? They unlock the realm over their business. They go to the home and they build the, 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 the pool.
puja room to host their god what is that called altar the house has become an altar they want to unlock the realm over there they buy a new car straight go to the temple they will put every color they will do all things why they know they know unless the realm come and touch the car we are not going to drive wow what is that called they understand demons understand the technology of an altar yet we come to praise and worship and we are standing putting our hands inside we are not there for prayer we have become too busy too busy too busy every time there's a lack of altar the realm will not work realm is dysfunctional when there is no altar it's not a joke my dear friend prayer meeting is not a joke i'm telling this after 25 years of ministry i'm hungry for one thing if you pull the mic from me and send me away no problem i'm hungry to know this technology i'm hungry for the presence i want to know how that realm of god if it can happen to moses if it can happen to elijah what is this man called joshua he will look up at the sun and say be still over ajalon and it was still no other man could do that in his days what is it that 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 that, that david would go and look at goliath 40 days he challenged the people he said today 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 i will give you well, you didn't even fight man you just got some stones and some pebbles in your hand and you say today i will give you as carcass what is this man who could function like that why these were men of altars these were men jesus spent the first 30 years building an altar every day morning he would go and jesus would do two things he would see what his father was doing he would hear what his father was saying without that he never did ministry john chapter 5 verse 30 john chapter 5 verse 19 jesus said i never do anything by myself i train myself to connect with the realm there were 6000 priests in the temple he asked daddy shall i i need 12 disciples where should i go Father said, don't go to the Bible college. <gasps> there are priests there, white and white, Levites, graduated with all the degree, demons, Sunni Prasad and all are there. He said, don't go there. Walk on the Sea of Galilee. My goodness. How is it that Jesus could go and connect and get 12 names and come straight and say, hey Peter, I saw you yesterday. Come, come, come. John, you also come. Andrew, you come. Levi, you come. Thaddeus, you come. <gasps> Why didn't he go there? And all the men he said, it's only by the spirit you can do this work. They were unschooled, untrained. On the day of Pentecost, a realm came over them. They were connected to the altar. These men did not know much about all the encyclopedia of the Bible and the commentaries. But Peter would say something. 3,000 were cut to the heart. What did they do in the upper room? Build an altar. Build an altar. Build an altar. Check your home. Is there an altar? This is interesting. This is interesting. Give a little time here, please. If, which, which country you want to go, brother? And is there any country that you desire to go? Which country? New Zealand. New Zealand. Watch it. Brother Vijay is here. He wants to go to New Zealand. Let's say tomorrow he buys one nice... Two kilos sweets, starts practicing jogging with nice sports shoe. And he tells uh, his dear wife, I want to go to New Zealand. Oh, New Zealand, New Zealand. Full packed up everything. Runs to the airport, to the New Zealand embassy and says, Sir, please take this laddus. Open the gate. I want to go to New Zealand. So the sir will get up and say, Wow, you gave me laddu. Go to New Zealand. Will you do that? Security, this, security, RUT, everyone will stop him. And they'll say, no, if you want to go, you can go to New Zealand, but you need three documents. You need a visa, passport, and overall, God sent ticket also your name. Yeah. What's that called? You can't enter just because you like a country. You just cannot walk in. If you want to enter that territory, there is laws. And we just cannot come to Dubai just like that. I cannot do the same thing there. And give a nice madur vada, masal vada, masal dosa. You know, this, 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 sir, please, 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 please. Somehow I said, please, and came here. You will not believe me. We follow the protocol and the procedure. Now, this planet called Earth is meant and made only for human beings. There is no spirit colony on the Earth. Have you ever seen a traffic light? All the spirits are crossing, brother. Hold on. No, there's no nothing like that. 
All the spirits in that court, fourth house, no, only they are staying. This school is only for spirits. No, there is nothing like that. Now watch this. If any spirit being has to operate on this earth, now watch this. A spirit being needs a human body. That's the law of territory. I hope you got that. If they have to enter another territory to execute their operation, they need access. What is the access? Body. A spirit should not operate on the earth without a body. That's why even the Holy Spirit just cannot move. No, I saw the Holy Spirit going on the road. I saw the Holy Spirit climbing the tree. I saw, no, no, no one sees that. Even on the day one when the Spirit of God came, the Spirit of God came upon human God. You are the temple. You, you, you. Many times we are rejecting the Holy Spirit. Oh, if he comes, I will speak in tongues. If he comes, now you. If you want the move, it is you. Why are you resisting the move in the name of some kind of human agenda? No, God is looking for you. I will pour out my spirit on all vegetables, on all cars, on all. That is God. If you have flesh, you are the candidate God is looking for. Stammering tongue, no problem. Color, no problem. Hair, or there, or everywhere, no problem. God is looking for a human vessel. Acts chapter 1 verse 15, in those days, number 120, Peter stood up and Peter spoke from David. And he said, David spoke, or the Spirit spoke, through the mouth of David. Acts 1.15. Holy Spirit spoke through. If you want God to speak. God is looking for a human vessel. God is looking for you. You host the Holy Spirit. Even the Spirit of God. Every spirit including God's spirit. Is at the mercy of a human body. Your body is an altar. Either you attract evil spirit or Holy Spirit. That's the reality of it. That's why pastor will say, come to Bible study. Come to house fellowship. Come to this place. Why? He's guarding your body so that that antenna will not get access to you. What is bondage? What is stronghold? What is mental torture? What is depression? Some other spirit gaining access to your mind. Why? You built an altar there. Let me come how altars are built. That's how it is. Whenever we pray, God moves through your body. If you're waiting for power, you're waiting for grace. If you're waiting for love to go through. If you're waiting, God use me. Build an altar. Anybody heard of this game called Charlie, Charlie? Ah, come, man. Come, 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 come. You see who raised the hand? How old are you, pa? Twelve. Twelve years old. My goodness. He knows Charlie Charlie. Do you know Charlie Charlie, Pastor? Don't. You know, brother, Charlie Charlie? No. Oh, that's Charlie Charlie. Charles Charles. Charlie Charlie? Charlie Charlie? No. Let's listen to him what he says. What is, what is that, Charlie Charlie? Please explain. I don't know. I just heard of it and like I saw in some of the videos, they were like some kind of uh, tomorrow, like tomorrow am I going to get this food and they spin the pencil and yes or no it comes on that and on that, they decide it, whether it's yes or no. Give him a hand. I'll explain the, the mystery that he said. Thank you. Thank you. You can. One of my pastor friends called up and said, my daughter was, is freaked out and because they were playing this game. And in the neighborhood, this is what was happening. And she was 10 years old that time. And I said, what was happening? They said they were playing Charlie, Charlie. And she came so fearful. It's as if a spirit of fear just took on her. What is this game? I didn't want to give much details, but I want to tell you, this has come in the news. So they write yes or no, the children, and they cross a pencil like this. And they stand around this paper, and they call Charlie, Charlie. And they ask questions to Charlie, Charlie. And they say, Charlie, Charlie, is tomorrow holiday. The pencil will move by itself. You tell me how the pencil will move by itself. So who is Charlie, Charlie, by the way? Whom are they connecting to? So children know how to access the realm. When I said about Charlie Charlie to my daughter, my second one said, Daddy, there's something called Bloody Mary. It's a game. Children as young as 12 years old. He's not come of age. 
He's a tender boy, but children know how to connect to the spirit realm. And they're calling Charlie, Charlie. That day, my friend's daughter, they put down the question, Charlie, Charlie, will I die? And the pencil moved to yes. One kind of spirit for fear came upon this little girl, rushed out of the room, came to the house, started hiding in a corner. Telling, what if I die? I die, I die, I die. Ha! Ah. Realm. Realm. They know how to connect to the realm. Children know. And today we, if, if, if you have not seen, this is happening right under our nose in our house. Realm. They know how to bring and operate that realm. Video games, social, you think it's just all about that? Ah! Oh. Just look at our movies that are released. What's the first scene in some of our movies? The first scene is the, the, the puja. The first scene is you put all the worship of their gods. Why? Why after spending so much money, crores of rupees, you got the best of actors and suddenly the first is you do that. Why? You want the realm to descend on the movie so the movie will be blessed. In closing, as we pray, consistency of practice. How do you build an altar? Consistency of practice. Consistency of practice will bring you to a partnership with the Spirit. Write this word down, word for word, everything. Consistency of practice will bring you into a partnership with the Spirit. That's one of the ways to build an altar. Consistency. If you lie once, okay. If you lie twice, okay. If you keep lying, lying and lying, you come in association with the spirit of lie. If you watch porn once, okay brother, please don't do it. Okay sister, don't do it. If you watch it twice, come let me pray for you. But regularly, you go underneath your bed, you go to a secret place, you slip away and you feast and binge on sexually charged content. You know what happens to you? You come in partnership with the spirit of lust. Don't play games with the spirit realm. Please. You ask anybody who chases demons out. And whenever you want to pray for a person and deliver the person and you want to say, hey demon in the name of Jesus, go. You know what the evil spirit will say? I won't go. Why? I've come in partnership with that person. I cannot go. And we rebuke in the name of Jesus. Out. Out. Right now. Out. But no, resist, no. Because I've come in partnership with the person. Some of the addictions you cannot break unless you break the altar. Some of things are following your family in the bloodline because the altars are still activated. Today we are going to break it, amen. Today certain things are shifted, amen. Today God is going to give us a release over our church, amen. We got to see the move in our church. Paul and Silas, they were beaten black and blue in the jail of Philippi. They knew the strategy of getting that realm operated in the cell. It's the darkest part in Philippi called the prison. What did they do? Praying, singing, consistency of practice, consistency, consistency. They kept praying and praying and praying. Sustained prayer is the secret to unlock the realm. That's why those grandmas and grandpas, that's why Simeon and Anna, that's why they used to sustain in prayer, in fasting. Why? That's the consistency of practice. You come in union with the Spirit. Holy Spirit. 10 days, 120 people. They didn't have commentaries. They didn't have preaching videos. They didn't have a special speaker. They even did not have a Bible. But in the upper room, consistency. Praying, praying, praying. Suddenly, the realm descended on them. From that day on, the church changed. The church was birthed when they built an altar. I challenge you. If New Life Church has to graduate and move to the next level, it's predicated upon an altar. 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 I don't know what I have, but I'll just close with this. Altar. 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 Fathers, check your homes. Young people, 
Check your very lives. Is there any altars activated in your life that we need to bring down? Some of you, what about your prayer? What about your word? Are you hurrying with one minute, two minute? Or is there any way you're sustaining? Close your eyes, everybody. And I get the worship team on top. Close your eyes. Saka badala varnaba. for some time. You are here. Can we have a D major? And we will just sing that song. Lord, I need your strength. I need your power. If you're recognizing some strange sickness in your body, if you're recognizing some strange patterns, you know something is hitting your family and you recognize, oh God, I don't have the altar. Somewhere it is missing, oh God, I don't have your realm to assist me. I struggle so much in the flesh. I need to break the altars. I need to raise another altar. If that is you, Lift up your hands as we go to God this, this, this morning. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, everybody. Looking in this let the realm come upon you let the realm come upon you you are here I worship you I worship you you are the way maker Miracle worker, promise keep light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Way maker, way maker, way maker. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Who you are, who you are, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. That is who you are. Everybody, everybody. That is who Chains, chains break. Chains break. Altars break. Curses break. Yes. Akaba ba ba boro bo. Shabadi ramana dalo bo zikaba. That is who you are. That is who you are. Hallelujah. Curse means a cycle of defeat. Today we will break some curses in this place. If the Spirit of the Lord is bringing a pattern of defeat, I don't know why I'm not getting a breakthrough in my prayer, in my giving, in my fasting. Somewhere in my home, I feel that dryness. Somewhere in my sickness, I earn the money, but I feel it's getting drained. I don't know why I've been coming and coming. Today recognize an altar that is that is existing. The altar of God is, is somewhere dashed out, but we got to break curses. Break the altars that is pulling you down. Even as we sing, let's lift up your hands. You recognize that? Hallelujah. Lift up your hand and say, God, in the name Lord. of Jesus. Repeat after me, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, Jesus. I pull Lord. down altars of curses. Uh, altars of defeat. Uh, altars of shame. Altars of spiritual dryness. Altars, come on, altars of spiritual dryness. Altars of spiritual lethargy. Altars of pride, altars of the flesh, a rebuke, raise your voice, raise your voice, raise your voice, Sapobo, Seberibidi, Rana Kadalabo. Oh, that is who you are, that is who you are. 
Is anyone here if you're not being filled with the Holy Spirit and you don't have the gift of tongues and you desire you desire that move I want you to come in the front I want to pray for you and lead you if you say I want I want that infilling I want that anointing or if you say when I was young I used to speak and operate in that gift but now I don't have that gift you come in the front don't be ashamed don't look at anybody this is God's house this is the altar once that realm over over unlocks over your life you're never the same again I'm going to pray for dreams and visions and giftings this is how the church should move some of the things that you've been waiting for has not been happening too long because God requires an altar if you're here to say God I want to move for you I want you to use me I want you to set me on fire if that is you come up in the front come up in the front come up in the front come up this is our time this is our time I know the service just just stretched today but this is this is this is the agenda of God this is nothing to do with me but this is God let him ignite you with fire this is the place of the altar now now drum up drum up just cut down the volume sister a little bit now all of you look at me please I'm taking a little time look at me Lord desires to give the gift we only receive it now when you receive the gift of the spirit three things firstly it is for those who are born again if you say Lord I've given my life to you I surrender I've turned from my sin you are my savior this gift is for you second when you ask you receive very simple third is where you may struggle but today we will remove that out the spirit gives you utterance and you do not operate with your human brain this gift of tongues is called the gift of language this is a speaking gift not standing gift this is a speaking gift yeah you operate with your mouth if you speak in English you speak with your human brain if you speak in Hindi you speak with your human brain but the gift of tongues is you speak with your spirit now the Spirit of God will give you the utterance but your mouth speaks whatever sound you make the spirit of God after you pray we're going to pray for so for a minute or we'll sing that song welcome Holy Spirit we have that you just take on an E major please yeah once we pray and after that open your mouth and let the river flow don't operate with your brain and you'll begin to say okay according to the grammar standards according to human linguistics no we don't operate that this is a different gift and slowly what does this gift do this gift will unlock that realm revelation spiritual edification prayer and you begin to converse with God on a different dimension that's how we move this is only received not manufactured if you don't want God would say okay Thambi no problem but for those who are hungry I tell you this is what happened to me when I was 16 An unusual presence burden passion came upon me that's still burning in my spirit and so third time when we say Lord give me after that begin to open your mouth whatever utterance the Spirit of God is giving release it without fear it could be one sound it could be a baby sound it could be something that you don't understand let it flow I and other pastor team I'll ask my wife also to come and join we'll pray we'll lay our hands and pray receive the Spirit would you lift your hands and pray anybody here you want to come forward don't have to feel shy this is yours you don't have a way to go to heaven in heaven you don't require all this this is for you to know your divine mandate this is for you so that your altar will keep burning in your house this is for you that whenever you go to your job your workplace you'll know you're a different man different woman and you carry the realm you begin to speak to people they are wooed to you they listen to you they, you come and speak with authority why you have the realm with you it's not about human intelligence it's not about how well spoken well dressed you are no it's the realm assisting you Without the realm assisting you, it's a waste to live a Christian life. Welcome Holy Spirit. Image your place. You're the living water. Never dying fountain. Comforter. 
My sister, pray and say, Lord, fill me this morning. Fill me, oh God, that the rain will flow out of my life. Fill me, oh Father, that I will walk in freedom. Fill me, that, oh God, I will walk in power. Fill me so that, oh God, I will walk with your authority. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Pray, 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 pray. Pray, Receive the spirit, receive the power, receive the power. Live inside of me. Fill us with your power. Oh, fill us with your power. Open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth and begin to speak. Ramba na kaba raba raba, sebere kebe de lobo, raba raba na de lobo, shekebe de lebi, ribi 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 kaba da laba. Receive, 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 receive. Lift your hands, receive, receive, receive. Open your mouth and begin to speak. Begin to speak. Begin to speak. Begin to speak. Open your mouth. Oh, raba 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 na kaba da laba. Oh, ra 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 kaba da laba laba. Yes, live inside of me. Begin to speak in tongues, those who are filled. Begin to speak in tongues in the mic. Come on, don't be ashamed. Come on, those who are filled, release. Release the words. Let there be the move of God today. A new chapter in your life. A new history in your life to buy. Thank Thank you, Thank you. Your power, your power, your power, your grace. Oh, Rara Karen de Lebe. Ribaraba, open your mouth, open your mouth. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, praise you, Jesus. Receive, receive the power. Receive, open your mouth, open your mouth, hallelujah. Praise your name, praise your name. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Receive, receive the fire. Praise your name, O God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We're going to sing the song for the last time. I hear some of you speaking. I hear the sound. But listen to me. Open your eyes and listen to me. This is one of the wonderful gifts to receive and operate. I tell you, you feel so light. God begins to operate in you. You get words. You get, you get secrets of the Lord. God begins to unlock certain realms and revelation that you can never get from any person on the earth. This is your birthright. We're going to sing one last time. Fill us with your power. When we come to that, after three times, I want you to begin to clap your hands. Yeah, energize your body. You don't have to stay sick. Clap your hands and speak whatever utterance the Holy Spirit is giving. This is God's heart. There's no lie. There's no shadow. There is nothing to do with the realm of man. You and God. You're standing at the altar. Amen. Amen. You're the living water. Never trying fountain. Comforter. Comforter and counselor. 
One more time, take complete, complete control. control. Show the living, you're, you're the living, living water. water. Saka ba 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 Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fill us with your power. Three times fill us with your power. Oh, fill, fill us, us with, with your power. power. Oh, last time fill, fill us, us with, with your power. power. Break it and keep playing the symbols. Oh, live inside. Everybody clap your hands and begin to speak in tongues. Raise a shout of praise. Raise your Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying, keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Show the lava lava lava. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence so real this day, O Lord. Thank you for your tangible presence this day, O Lord. Lord, we worship you, God. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you. So just put your hands together once again for the Lord. Just put your hands together for the Lord. Thank you, God, for coming into our presence. To this place so far. Thank you God for your lovely presence this day. And we believe God that you're going to move. And this is just the starting of all. And we pray God that you may not stop. That our altars may be built in the name of Jesus. Like Abraham wherever he went he set an altar for the Lord. And Lord we pray that you may help us so Father. Not to build the altars of the demons, but to build the altar of the Lord. Not for this worldly way, Lord. Not for the, the spirit of lust. Not for the spirit of domination. Not for the spirit of this discouragement, suicide. We rebuke it in the name of Jesus. We pray for the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit to come and rest in our houses, O oh Father Lord. In our lives, in our job, in our places, the way we speak may change in the name of Jesus. We worship you, God. And I pray some of the prayers that have been praying, Father Lord, this year, the year of divine restoration will be activated. Some of the pains may go in the name of Jesus. We worship you, God. Thank you, God, for, for moving in our midst. We worship you. And we pray, God, that as we move, as we just move, Lord, from this place out for different place, we pray, God, that your presence may be with us, O Lord. And cover us with your Holy Spirit. Amen. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Can we just lift up our hands? Amen. Lift up our hands towards the heavens. Father, Go with the benediction. Now may the love of God, grace and mercy of Jesus, sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, enable each one of us that we all be filled with the realm of God our life in jesus name we pray amen amen, amen and amen we have yeah put our hands together